From the Asgard Company Studios in beautiful Wichita Falls, Texas, from the finest mind in the modern fitness industry, the one true voice in the strength and conditioning profession, the most important podcast on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, starting Strength Radio. Welcome back to Starting Strength Radio. It's Friday, and so are we, or something like that. And uh, we're here today with our friend Ben Gillenwater. Ben is a, uh, he's got a quite an interesting background in, um, in privacy and security and dark world shit. And, uh, <laughs> and we're going to talk to Ben about privacy. Uh, we and you use the internet and privacy is a concern and if it's not it should be so we're going to talk to ben today about this and we're going to pick his brain about uh about these topics and hopefully all of us will learn something ben thanks for being here yeah thanks for having me rip what's your background let's let's get the bona fides out of the way so people will know that you know yeah that makes sense so Gosh, I've been a uh, computer guy my whole life. So starting at the age of 14, I was selling computers at a store because I just liked looking at them and talking about them. And I eventually found my way into being the computer guy for uh, a big division of Northrop Grumman's. So Northrop Grumman is a U.S. defense contractor. And I found myself in the position of uh, providing advice to people and organizations around Uh, security specifically. So I spent about a year in a security group thinking about nothing but cybersecurity and digital security and how to protect our customers. So Northrop Grumman, about a quarter of its business at the time, and this was in, I was in the security group in 2007, uh, about a quarter of its business was IT. So Northrop Grumman, people think of Northrop Grumman as airplanes, uh, uh, airplanes, ships, yeah, small canoes, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, spacecraft, you know, right. stuff like that. And they do all that stuff. But they do as much as, if not more than uh, that in IT. So we were doing $10 billion a year in IT when I was there. No, I don't think most people are aware of that aspect of yeah, so the that government, particular defense contractor's business. Yeah, it's an odd. And, and all of them do it. You know, Raytheon and Lockheed and Boeing, Boeing they all have everybody. IT divisions. Right. Because... It, it was naturally born out of the fact that they themselves have extremely complex IT environments. Mm-hmm. And guys like me were involved in those IT environments. And then everybody else is like, well, you guys are really good at, at it. And we have complex environments. What should we do? Because we're the Department of Interior or the Department of Justice or the Department of Defense mm-hmm. or an intelligence agency or Unical or Honda or Toyota. You know, I had all these. Uh, for a while, I worked in this group that did commercial business. We did commercial IT contracts. Mm-hmm. Anyways. The, I spent some time focused on the, the uh, more closely focused on the defense and intelligence and security side and found myself involved with strategic decision making around how to stay secure, which means for, there's a piece of that that means how to stay private. Part of security right. is confidentiality. Security is, is best uh, thought of as a, a three-letter acronym, which in this context is quite... Uh, Ironic, CIA, (laughs) confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So confidentiality is keeping your stuff secret. Integrity is making sure that the message you receive is the same one that was sent, and the message you send is the same one that gets received, Right. because that's a problem for some organizations. And then availability means that you can do what you want to do with the systems that you're using. When you want to do it. Yeah, so in the context of our conversation today, confidentiality is keeping stuff private. And making it so that if you and I are talking right now, we are purposely sharing our message with the world. But later we might have a conversation that we don't want to share with anybody else. And it's not because it's anything particularly secret, but we just decided to have it just the two of us. Right. And, you know, somebody listening in the other room, hearing through the wall, they might not hear anything special, but nonetheless, we don't, we prefer for them not to listen. Right. You know, because we didn't invite them into the conversation. Right. And so I think online there are... Uh, a lot of considerations to be had about that. You know, you might be typing an email to your grandmother about how's your Sunday. But 
if you, somebody's going to listen to that conversation, or in this case, read the conversation, mm -hmm. it'd be nice for you to know. Was your stuff sure. private or not? Because you mm -hmm. might decide to stray into areas that you don't want anybody else to know you're talking with your grandmother about. You might, like her health. Yeah. Or, or her, your family her, background. Her will or her... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the will. I mean, that's true. You know, certainly. You know, her yeah. financial situation. Yeah. Uh, privacy is uh, perceived by most people in 2020 as a thing of the past. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, you know, people... It's so old-fashioned for me to worry about my social security number being <laughs> out there. Yeah. You know, and I still don't give it to... I go to the doctor. I don't give my social security number to the doctor at the doctor's office. Because, fuck yeah. them. What for? I know. What that's for? Same, same here. What are you going to contribute to my social security <laughs> account? That's what the damn thing's for. You know, but we've, we have allowed that private information... Uh, to be used in a whole bunch of ways it was not intended to be used. And we have voluntarily handed that over, you know. Yeah. You, you go over here to Taco Casa, and uh, I want six tacos and a combo burrito with extra sauce. Okay, that'll be 1314. And what's your social security number? <laughs> you know, I'm, hell, I won't give them my name. <laughs> When your taco I, shop, is I don't give them my social. name at the taco <laughs> shop, but yeah. people are very, very casual about private information, and and yeah. as a result, we have a different privacy environment now than we've ever had before. We have uh, become soft about our privacy. We're yeah. less we're less worried about it, and while at the same time. Technology has advanced to the point where it's real easy to abuse this privacy situation. It's very easy, especially because we give away our thoughts and feelings publicly to organizations that intentionally abuse and manipulate your thoughts and feelings. Now, that side of it gets into where people start to doubt that kind of a message. And so I don't necessarily want to delve into that piece of it and talk about the way that Facebook operates as an organization and my feelings about their ethical yeah, choices. You know, you know, Twitter, Facebook, if you... Uh, look, don't put on Facebook where you're going for lunch. Okay? Because well, it, that's stupid. <laughs> don't do that. Because if you get in the habit of sharing private shit with the world something bad is going to happen eventually it's just that's not a good idea and but nowadays everybody thinks well it's out there anyway yeah and and you i think know. we've we've all grown comfortable in a way there's a, there's some some discomfort but there's still some comfort around the fact that there are active surveillance apparatuses yes recording our phone calls and and this is all public right like th this right. is not anything everybody that, knows it but they'd rather not think about it right or they, right? they accept it as that's what's required to keep me safe right and there are instances where that's true but there's a lot of instances where it's not but i think that, that there's, there's a lot of instances where it should have kept us safe safe and didn't do it in that too you yeah. know yeah. you'll remember the boston marathon bomber yeah absolutely you know, that all took place in a in an environment where everybody's phone calls are being recorded, it sure did, and yet that happened. So, I mean, and I'm it, not, I don't it, personally it, know it, if it's it, like, but you know, that's really, reassuring you know. in a way. And I hate to be this way, but that's reassuring in a way. Uh, they, uh, yeah, they're recording your, they're recording all your phone calls. The national security apparatus is recording all their phone calls. But they're so completely incompetent that it doesn't matter. So maybe that makes you more calm, right? For, for now, except for the fact for now, that it's permanently recorded. Right. It never goes away. Right. So there's that side that we could delve into. But what I'd like to do today is talk about some constructive elements around 
the general thoughts of privacy. Like if, right. if you are interested in you and I being able to sit in that room, I was talking about just have a conversation, the two of us, and know whether or not somebody else is listening. Even, you know, that's, that's what's happening online. Okay. There are conversations that happen online and you might think that nobody's listening, but somebody is. Well, let's just start with this then. Can I have a telephone conversation with anybody that is not being recorded? In 2020, is every single phone call I make recorded? Yes. Now that's, I mean, you knew what he was going to say, didn't you? you all, we all knew what he was going to say. And you know this to be true. Yeah. Yeah. And what about texts? Absolutely. Right. Every bit and bite that crosses Everything a that wire. happens on this thing here. Yeah. Is, now, is a per, it goes in your permanent record. Even Isn't if it's amazing? encrypted, it still gets recorded. Right. In the hopes in, of the off chance. Well, not really off chance. Eventually the, we the can unencrypt it if we... Yeah, we can decrypt it in the future. Yeah. Um, so... so now, what do you do about that? Absolutely nothing. There's nothing you can do about that. But what you can do... Who is recording it? Just to, just to kick this detail around. Who exactly you, is recording it? You want me to... I'd want you like to tell us... Say the, wor- say the word. Say the acronym. Is the NSA recording it? Generally, they're the ones that do that. That's who does that, right? Yes. And they have the authority to record both domestically and internationally. And as a result, that's what they do. That's exactly what they do. They're incentivized to do as much of that as they can because the people that run those programs are empowered by large budgets and large egos and large capabilities because that's a pretty damn powerful thing to be able to do. It certainly is, isn't it? And that must feel very empowering to be in charge of that program. I bet it does. You know? I bet it makes their little dicks hard. (laughs) What do you want to bet? Their little... (laughs) <laughs> little tiny little wood to be able to have that much power over other people. But so there's there's two pieces of the con- there's the government piece you can do today. You can't do anything about that. But there's right. the other piece that you can do something about. Right. And this is the commercial piece. This is the corporate piece. This is the part that involves monitoring what you do for the purposes of uh, commercial exploitation for ads. Right. And the psychological manipulation that needs to take place in order to to increase that function. And so I think what a lot of people don't realize is that as you are browsing the internet, there are multiple things watching you click and read and type. Right. And, and behave. And those behaviors are recorded for the purposes of understanding who you are and what you like. And what I buy. And what you buy, what you're afraid of, or what you think right. about, or who you're connected to, right. or where you part- where you have transactions, you know, financial transactions, so that you can be better sold to. Right. This is these are for commercial purposes. For purely commercial purposes, and these are the right. things that you can do something about. Right. And some people think to themselves, like, well, what do I care? Because it's not a. It's it's aggregated. They're not, they don't have a profile that says, okay, Facebook, for example, or Google. They don't have, I'll say Google, actually, Facebook's a little more sketchy than some might think, but let's use Google as an example. They don't have a thing that says, hey, advertiser, here's Mark Ripito as an individual with a bunch of per- personally identifiable information. Right. This is his address. This is where you can send your ads so that he'll see them. They don't do that. They say, tell us who you want to target within a certain age range and a certain demographic. And then we'll show that we'll show that group of people an ad, but they don't tell right. you who's in the group, right? Which is okay, all right. Well, they don't have to because you know? until I buy something or don't buy something, they want me to buy. It doesn't matter who I am, right? And and the, they there's that's the one barrier where companies like Google have, for the most part, as far as I understand, have defined that threshold to say. We're not going to give you the person's information. We're just going to confirm to you that we have shown ads to people that are like the ones that you want to show ads to. Right. And so those ads, what they do is, if I place an ad and I say, you know, if, if I'm going to help you with marketing for Starting Strength, and we're going to place an ad that's going to have people go to startingstrength.com, 
who say, hey, come get strong, check out startingstrength.com. In order to make sure that that ad succeeded in driving the person to your website, we have to install a tracker on your website. And we tell the tracker that it's a Google tracker that connects mm-hmm. into their ad platform and it watches that person go around the internet. And when they go to your website, it goes, hey, that guy saw that ad. Right. And he either clicked on it, went directly to your website, or he didn't click on it, but the next day he typed it in himself. Right. And it, it, it's attribution is the term for it. It's ad attribution. It's how, it's how you connect the action with the ad. Right. And that's, that's the power of digital marketing. That's why it's such a massive multi-billion dollar industry is because you know when people have seen your ad and you can manipulate your ads based on that. And when they arrive at your website, you can say, welcome, uh, you saw an ad that, welcome, that gave you 10% off. Our website recognizes that we offered you a 10% off coupon. Here it is. It's in your shopping cart. It's all tied right. together. But with those trackers, so Facebook has that, Twitter has that, mm-hmm. Reddit has that. And then there's a bunch of other ad networks of names that nobody's ever heard of. Right. But there's um, code on every, basically every website on the internet. Because even if you're not running ads, Google runs the most popular analytics program in the world that's on basically every website that lets you see how many people come to your website. It's a free tool that web hosts like myself install so that I I know how many people came to my website yesterday, what did they do when they got there. But all that information is also being shared with Google. And so... Who else does Google share it with? they, They do a pretty good job at keeping it private within themselves. From the NSA, for example. Well, they had a problem for a while that Snowden revealed where the NSA was stealing all of your from emails. Google. They were in Google's network. So Google's Google, is, Google is, didn't is, know it, right? So that's a, that's the, the that's story. The, that's the story. And and right. I, I think to a certain extent that's probably yeah, true. Maybe they didn't. You know. Google has a fantastic security capability. The information you do give them is probably better protected than it is in any other organization on the planet. Um, and what they were doing was they were encrypting all the stuff you were sending, like when you wrote a Gmail it would be encrypted when it's outside. Once it got inside of Google's network, it was unencrypted, and the NSA was in their network, uh, reading all that in the clear, and then and capturing Google didn't it. know. Supposedly not. That's the story. So, well, uh, I think I think the 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 concept is, if you want to be able to have uh, privacy, as you behave online, as you use your phone and you use your computer, then I think at the very least you might want to be aware of the fact that all these trackers are watching you move you know, around the internet. You know, I have uh, had people tell me, and I've, I've seen it actually happen, uh, somebody will have an Android phone in their pocket. And I don't think my iPhone has done this. I've never noticed it doing this, but I I know a guy that had an, I, an Android phone in his pocket. And... Several of us were having a conversation in the room about a commercial product, and he gets a call or something. He picks the phone up out of his pocket, and there's an ad for the thing that we were talking about. Over the phone. On the phone. Yeah, that's messed up. That that, I, that I will make everybody in the room people, stop You ever had that happen? <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time where you're, you're uh, having a conversation with Yeah. That it's just, uh, and that's so, that's so fucked up. See, I don't have I don't have any app from any social media on my phone. I will not install Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram on the phone. And I don't know where that information is being picked up from. It's probably one of those apps. And uh, but I don't have it. By the same token, I don't have an Android phone. I've got a, and I've never heard of an iPhone doing that. No, I mean, you're it giving, does happen you're, on you're iPhone. The it's, then it's the apps. Yeah, you got to be giving them permission, I assume. Well, okay. I will say this because this is a very popular topic amongst shit. Anybody that's had anything weird happen like that to them, which a lot of people right. have. Right. They look at their phone the next thing, like, what in the hell? I was just talking. Or you, or you get a uh, the pop, the really good one is you get a Facebook uh, friend recommendation from somebody that was at the party you were at last night. <laughs> that you had not previously gotten a Facebook friend recommendation about. Right. 
The crazy part about Facebook this. Facebook knew everybody was there. Yes. God. If you, if. Jesus. Because it's such an addictive behavior. The dopamine response you get when you open Facebook and you open Instagram and open Twitter is so strong that it's chemically addictive. Isn't that amazing? And so. I don't get a dopamine response when I. You don't get that? Oh, no. <laughs> Neither do I. I go over there and I say, oh, fuck. Or, or, or I don't think I've so. I've got to put up here. today's article on Facebook. Let me see how fast I can do this and get the hell out of this. <laughs> Just close it as oh, fast God. as you can. Oh, God. I really, I hate it. But I, I, I have to say this, though, so that people, because I'm not trying to further any conspiracies, and I don't, I don't want anybody to, to listen to what I'm saying today and write off my opinions as, as paranoid. So right. I will clarify this. That is um, a thing that happens where you have a conversation and you see an ad. Now, the phone call one I haven't heard before, but shit like that. Where it's just like, whoa, everybody in the room agrees immediately. That is super creepy. Like what the yeah. hell just happened? I from from reputable sources, they're not actually listening to your microphone. They are able to target you that accurately, based on who you're with, and and it knows that if you open if anybody in the room is opening their their social networks app apps mm -hmm. at the same time, or potentially I'm not sure about this, but potentially going to websites with those trackers involved because some of them involve geolocating you which means knowing where you are mm -hmm. sometimes generally sometimes specifically depending on the technology in the background so that the the ability to correlate those data points together and come to conclusions is so strong that they are able to do creepy creepy stuff like that where you where you are delivered a targeted ad that was based on a conversation because what happens is somebody in that conversation might pop it up on their phone later and search for it or might have searched for it before they arrived, or something like that. And there's activity that gets that gets tied together to make you that. don't you don't think it was necessary voice recognition? No, because the resource it's technically not feasible for that to happen is one of the issues. It's it's a it's a a feasibility problem. So in having a hot microphone on your phone all the time um, consumes battery, and the most important thing it does or it would do is it would show network traffic of that because that's it audio generates a lot of data it's a big file if you record stuff all right. the time it's a lot it's a big file is the most simple way to put it and 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 network engineers can watch the network traffic on a device and see whether or not there's unusual traffic patterns and and friends of mine have done this and they've analyzed the traffic patterns of devices that are supposed to record you all the time, like the Amazon Echo and the Google Home, and even they're not doing it. Yeah. Even the devices that look like they're doing it and are kind of designed to do that mm -hmm. are actually from, okay, and I'll just say the big ones. Amazon Echo, Google Home, and Apple's uh, HomePod. Amazon. Siri device. What is Alexa? That's Oh, that's that, that's the uh, that's Google. That's product. that's Amazon's. That's Amazon. Alexa product. is the name of the assistant that's part of their Echo devices. Oh, okay. So the, the Echo is the name of the device. Yeah. Okay. Those three one. I, I know people personally that have tested it and said, "Yep." Until you say the hot word, where you activate the device, it's not listening. It has onboard ability to recognize the phrase. It, it had to be listening, because. How would it not know? How would it know you haven't said the hot word? It ha it has computing has gotten advanced enough where it can do what we call like local voice recognition. So it doesn't need internet connectivity to to understand that the hot word has been said. Once the hot in word, in other is, words, it's not transmitting all the data, but it is it's it's looking listening. at all the data yeah it's listening that's right it's, it's it's listening it's just not recording it and transmitting it right it's it's listening all the time waiting for you to say the hot word and i'll say and, it right now but then i'll activate right everybody's, now everybody's they're not thing. sending all of that data that's right that's right, right now and, and when they do there's a lot of people out there that are going to catch on to it real quick i mean like the day it happens there will be hackers and security professionals and network professionals that go like guys unplug your stuff because something's changed and it's not good, and I can I can tell you right okay. now that that's not the case. It right. makes a lot of sense. The uh, so so essentially all all of us have a profile. Instagram, you know, you you have a profile based on your browsing history, and then we all get together in a room, 
and we have our location shit set up on our phone. Yeah. So whoever, whatever knows where we are has a profile matched to that location, which is matched to you. And then based on who you're with, the potential for a conversation about this thing is there. Because he's yeah. got a set of interests, I've got a set of interests. Where those overlap, high potential for this particular ad to be served to me. And then there yeah. we go. That makes perfect sense. To, to the point where it seems like, how is that possible? How did they get it so specific? Yeah. How did they drive that phone call? How did they drive? How did they know we were talking about that? It's so freaking advanced. I mean, yes. the guy's developing AI. What do you think they're doing it for? Partially, right? Partially, it's it's to develop Make money, decision-making models, sure, computer-based decision-making models that can take vast amounts of data and come out with um, uh, actions or or decisions or or conclusions that can drive these types of things, you know? So how much, uh, how closely you think this kind of thing is related to the apps that you voluntarily load on your phone? Very closely. And it's a big so part what, of it. what are the worst apps? All the Facebook, Instagram. All the social media. Apps. WhatsApp, because WhatsApp is owned by Facebook. Right. What, fa WhatsApp and Instagram are both owned by Facebook. Right. And are both in their own right. Yeah, I had global WhatsApp scale. on mine for a while and I, I took it off, I think. It, I, I mean, mean, does it come it, off? I don't know that it comes off. It 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 does uh, enough of where you want it to. If you delete it from your phone, it's you can be sure that it's no longer functioning. All right. Well, I've yeah. deleted it from my phone, but I, yeah. I literally have no social media apps on this phone. That's been intentional because, yeah. uh, you know, I'm on websites all the time. You visit a website and... Uh, so and so wants to know your location. That box pops up at the top. Oh yeah. What is that for? It's because they are brazen assholes. Wants to know your location. Go get fucked. It, it, unless... No, you're not. Don't ever let a website know your location on purpose. Why would you do that, boys and girls? Think about this kind of thing. My God, it's just so bizarre yeah. that they would ask like that. I mean, because sometimes it's obviously specifically contextual because you're looking something up on Yelp yep. or on Google Maps. Right. But sometimes you're not, and it's and they still ask for it. The reason why... Sometimes it's the Boston Globe or something like that. Yeah. Wants to know my location? The reason why they do that is for ad attribution. So that retailers are also using digital marketing. Right. So they can see that yeah. this many people in this many different locations saw this page with your ad on it, and this is how much we're going to charge you for it. It's it's that, and it's also, we showed you an ad about Target, and then you went to Target. Attribution. Right. The only way, the only way to attribute digital marketing to a physical store visit is by doing by installing location trackers in apps and websites. More popularly, apps. In that case, specifically, and I know this from personal experience because I run an app that's pretty popular, and I get hit up all the time by these sketchy people. I'm trying to you know keep keep my uh, my superlatives minimized here, but like these guys that want me to ask the millions of people that use my app for their location background location, which means not when they're just using the app, but all the time. And they want me to be one of those brazen assholes that says, right. can I have your location all the time? I'm so like, when they yeah. ask for my location, when a website asks for my <laughs> physical location, so-and-so wants to know your location, and I'm at my desktop in the office, they're going to see 3118 Buchanan, right? And you, it's, it's not a mobile. I'm not on a mobile. Yeah. It's not on a mobile. They're going to know where my office is. But yeah. they're also going to be able to see that it's not moving. So they're going to know that I haven't given them the location of my phone. Yes, that's correct. They right. can identify that you're using a desktop operating system. Right. On a desktop machine with a desktop browser um, from an IP address. And, and there's there are databases freely available that correlate IP addresses to physical addresses. Mm -hmm. um, you can do technical wizardry to try to pretend you have a different IP address. Right. 
you know, that's what some VPNs do. People might have heard of a VPN because there's lots of ads for VPNs Virtual nowadays. Virtual private networks. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that does is it makes it seem like you're elsewhere. That's right. not necessarily why people use that. It is sometimes because they want to stream right. a show from the BBC in Britain, but they're in California. So right. they use a VPN that is hosted in Britain so that they can watch the show. That's right. a thing. But generally, VPNs are used otherwise, which we should talk about, by the way. All right. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the your your location and your, um, you know, everybody's heard the term metadata now. Yes. Metadata is something that even as a technical guy, when I was younger, I didn't really know what that meant. But it's just something that describes the attributes of something. So the metadata about your browsing history when you're at your desktop in your office describes your operating system and your browser and all the stuff I mentioned. The metadata that's associated with your activity when you're on your phone describes you, the kind of phone you have, the model, the browser, all that. So that that's de, that's descriptive amazing. information is important to it's advertisers. It's so damned amazing how much yeah. data is going back and forth in the background. Oh, yeah. That we hadn't got the slightest idea. And that, that's why I want to talk about this because this stuff is invisible. It's physically invisible. You are – you're just – doing your thing online right, right. You're, you're just checking stuff out doing research thinking about what is actually taking place yeah if you can there's, that enables there's, you to do this online yeah and there is you'd be shocked if you could see the actual network traffic and you can if you're a network engineer you can see the network traffic going on in the background when you're sitting still reading something your computer's not still right there's a lot of communication going back and forth some of it for very legitimate purposes because that's how things work and then, and some of it for not as legitimate legitimate purposes potentially. There are actually trackers and and uh, analytics programs that watch you scroll the page, and they they try to estimate eye tracking based on your mouse movement. They can actually. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God <laughs> almighty. Yeah, there's there's one called Crazy Egg. It's very popular, and a lot of people use it. They put it on their website, and then you get to see all that data, and then so does Crazy Egg, and then Crazy Egg. I don't know what they do with it. I'm not making any insinuations one way or another, but they also get that data. Uh, and when it's free, which some of their plans are, you whenever anything's free. It's not free. It's not free. It's, not it's free. in exchange for something. Sure, obviously. And and that's, you know, that's where people get hung up with free email and free social media platforms and free everything. Everything is free nowadays. All this wonderful stuff that's really enjoyable is free. Because of ads. Right. Most of the internet. Or they're harvesting data and they're, people are paying for them. It's not free. Right. Right. And I've and by the way, from my app that I mentioned, I've had a lot of people also approach me to say, how much personally identifiable information are you gathering? Which in my case is zero on purpose because I respect people and their privacy even if I don't know them. Uh, how much are you generating? And if you have any, uh, we'd like to buy it. And we would like you to feed it to us and set up a synchronization job so that as new information comes in. And I, I just, I, you know, luckily without even being dishonest to them, I can say that, like, I don't have what you're looking for. And if I did, fuck off. I wouldn't sell it to you. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, and so that's always, a, I enjoy those conversations because yeah. I set it up that way on purpose. And uh, I'm not trying to, I, my, my, my app is free. But the, I built it for myself. And I want to share it with people. Will and then I have an upgrade option if people tell want to us pay what for it is. more. It's called PackPoint. So it's just, it's a little thing that just when you travel, you tell it where you're going, you tell it when you're going, and it tells you what to pack. It checks the weather. And, yeah. it, and it's a cool little, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I've traveled a lot through my life, and, and I found myself going through a routine every time I traveled. So I just kind of wrote it down of sorts. You mm -hmm. know? Now now it's uh, automated. And I use it, every, I use it for myself, and, and a, a lot of people... Uh, get value out of it and then you can pay to upgrade i have a monetization path that 99% uh, of people don't opt into and that's totally fine i'm not selling their stuff um you know i it, it's something that I'm just not interested in doing well that makes you uh different yeah. than a lot of people yeah uh, well let's talk about uh then what is the average person's biggest risk of exposure on the web, on, on your telephone, on your desktop, and what can you do to mitigate that? In my opinion, the biggest 
risk of exposure to just simply having that base level of privacy to knowing that you can just wander around the internet and nobody's following you are the ad tracking scripts from Facebook and Google and Twitter and all these and Reddit and all these companies we're talking about. And there are tools now. It, it's a it's a wonderful time for this conversation because for the first time, and this is six to twelve months old, basically, for this for the first time, it's easy for the average consumer to install something, forget that they've installed it, and have it just work in the background, blocking a lot of this stuff. And so there's there's two things. One is a program called Next DNS, N E X T D N S dot I O is their website. Mm-hmm. And what they do is okay, first I have to explain a little bit of background before I before I describe how Next DNS works. There's an address book on the internet that every time you type in cnn.com or google.com mm-hmm. or yahoo.com, there's a, a this address book system called DNS. It's domain name service. Mm-hmm. And so the domain name is cnn.com or google.com. You go and you ask the address book system, what's the IP address of that place? And it's equivalent to a, a, a physical address. You know, right. if, if and it's to, numbers and characters and yeah, it's all it's all numbers, right? And so people have seen it on their routers at home, right? If you want to set up your router at home, you go to one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot zero dot one, and then a screen pops up. That's not using DNS. You're going straight to the IP address mm-hmm. because the DNS system doesn't know the IP address of your router at home because it's it's your router at home, but it does know the IP address of every website and every publicly facing server. And so these ad systems connect to ads.google.com, ads.facebook.com. These are the systems behind the scenes that are receiving all this data from the tracking systems. And so every time your machine says, hey, uh, global address book system, DNS, what's the, what's the IP address of ads.google.com? I have some data to send them. I need to make a connection to ads.google.com. It comes back and it says, oh, well, it's 62 dot whatever, you know? Right. And um, next DNS intercepts that, that address book request and it has a blacklist that's configurable. You tell it what you want it to right. block. Do you want it to block social media? Do you want it to block other bad actors out there? And there's a whole list of stuff. And if you turn those on, every time it says, hey, what's address book? What's ads.google.com? It comes back with 0.0.0.0. And that ad request breaks. And it Shuts breaks down the transmission of the information. Yeah, and it breaks in a way. There's a there's a way that IT systems operate where you can fail gracefully. Is what they call it. And this is a this is one of those. It right. fails gracefully, which means it doesn't affect the system. Your phone doesn't go and like, oh god, I can't reach it, and I'm gonna right. I'm gonna choke up and slow down right. until I can. It just right. goes like, oh well, right. that's all right. On to the next thing. What's the next IP address we need? Oh, ads.facebook. Oh, shit, that one's 0.0.0.0. Okay, what's the next one? And then, and then in the background, your stuff's trying to communicate and you know, connect to these ad tracking systems, but it's not connecting. And it's invisible. And, it's, and nextdns.io is, a, is a, a service that came out of some uh, community work from guys like me that just built some stuff to help people out. Next DNS, I think, is eventually going to turn into a, I don't know if they're already charging or not, or if they're going to turn into a premium service. Last I looked, I think they were free. Hopefully they turn into a premium service because you need to pay for stuff like this because sure. like we were just talking about. And it's worth money. Yeah. And uh, and, the, and Next DNS is actually getting some um, some recognition from major players in the security space as being relevant and being something and that people can So that's can Next use. DNS. Dot io yeah and you'd recommend that yep okay i do and it puts a little thing on your phone that says vpn and as long as that little thing's on there the next dns is running and you can you can you know set it up pretty easily i think i think if you're if you're comfortable using the internet you could you could figure out how to set it up for yourself right so that's a big one the next one and that by the way that that can live on your phone and your computer and should right it runs in the background on both I use it on I use it on my phone on my computer. Uh, I have more advanced stuff at home that's not like consumer friendly, 
Right. But when I'm out and about, I use next DNS. Right. Um, on your so on your laptop and phone. Yeah. Right. Android, iPhone, Mac, Windows, Linux, everything. They've they've done a good job at, at making themselves available. Um, the next one is the browser. So your browser is a window into the internet. Right. You tell it what to do and it does it. And the website that you go to tells your browser what to do and it does it. It tells it what to show. It tells it what to do in the background. It, you know, and, and, w- and when the website says, show an image, I've, I'm on startingstrength.com. Okay, there's an image of Mark Ripito. There's a link to an article, whatever. Also, you know, if we had set up an ad system, there's an ad tracker. Mm-hmm. The, you, there are browsers that also try to get in front of that and say, you know, we kind of have these uh, massive lists of things that we don't want the browser to show. And so we're going to block all that stuff. And so Firefox has turned into that. Mm-hmm. Firefox used to be a regular browser that just did what it was told. Like right. they all do, you know, that's what Chrome does. That's what Safari does. That's what Microsoft Edge does. Well, the new Edge kind of has some privacy stuff in it, but Firefox has turned into a very privacy-focused browser. And it's not it doesn't come with your computer, which is part of the problem. Right. When you want to use the internet, you click on the internet button that came with your computer. Right. Or and not, it usually you know. goes to Explorer or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a Windows machine, it goes to yeah. Internet Explorer. Nowadays, Microsoft's new one is called Edge. Some people will start to see that. Mm-hmm. And then on a Mac, it's Safari. Now, I will give credit to both um, Apple and Microsoft here in that both of their newest browsers of Safari and Edge are have some good privacy stuff in them. They don't go all the way with it. They don't block stuff that I prefer to block. But but they're, they're like halfway there, which is pretty mm-hmm. cool. And they deserve credit for it. But if you want to go all the way there and if you want to stay, if you want to know that as you're perusing the internet, uh, it's just you, for you know, and you want to be fairly confident in that, then Firefox is a good one. Uh, and there's one called Brave. Yeah, I've got Brave on a couple of machines, and uh, I, you know, force a habit. I just default to Chrome, and I know I shouldn't do that. But yeah, and you can add stuff to right. Chrome. So the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which does a lot of work on uh, digital privacy mm-hmm. and and just rights online, uh, made a free tool called Privacy Badger, and it's an add-on for your browser. It only works on desktop. Right, and so so because uh, that that's the thing too is that mobile browsers uh, don't run what they call extensions, and Privacy Badger is an extension. It's like an add-on that sit that right. runs with your browser. So if you if you're on mobile, you need to use a browser that has this built in, which is Firefox or Brave. And if you're on your desktop, you can use Chrome. You just need to add if if you're interested in privacy, you need to add something like Privacy right. Badger. It's a good tool, easy to use. The, the caveat is that when you do this stuff, some websites break. Not very many, but some of them go like, oh, our ad script didn't run or this other thing didn't run. Or one of our things that was legitimate got blacklisted accidentally and it actually got looked at as not being legitimate. And so if you go to a website that looks broken, these things, you can turn off next DNS, open the website and turn it back on. Or you can tell Brave or Firefox or Privacy Badger to... Uh, make this website okay, you know, and, and kind of whitelisted is what they call it. So what's DuckDuckGo? DuckDuckGo is a search engine right. that competes with Google.com. Right. Google is the de facto, it's the Kleenex of yes. of search. It's yes. a verb. Right. And anytime it becomes a right. verb, you know it's popular, right? Yeah, so it's, it, yeah, <laughs> nobody can do without it. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's and a, it is fantastic. Functionally. Those guys can... You can misspell and garble and just get little yeah. pieces of an idea and put the damn thing into Google, and it'll tell you what you want to know. Yeah. It's amazing. I do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. And anything that powerful is pretty scary. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty damn scary. Yeah, because the stuff you search for is what's in is the in your mind. of, of you're, you're putting in, I'm searching, I'm afraid of something. I can't remember you know, or, it, but Google can find it anyway. Yeah. It's much smarter than me. Yeah. And that's pretty fucking scary. <laughs> it is, yeah. And it's something yeah. to be aware of. I think I think people just are uh it, it's not, okay, I'm not going to criticize people when I say this. And my intention is not to criticize when I say that 
that you are complacent as you use tools like Google.com. Yes. You don't really have a choice, you know, until, except for DuckDuckGo. So DuckDuckGo is an alternative that until recently wasn't really worth using. Because you try to switch it, people say, well, DuckDuckGo respects your privacy. They don't record your searches. They don't sell your data. That they're... DuckDuckGo is not an advertising company. Google is an advertising company. Yeah. They have different incentives, different purposes. Um, but it was no good. You right. know, you'd search for something they, and you would get They have different capabilities as yeah. a result of that. Yeah, different. I mean, Google hires the best engineers on the planet. Right. You know, their stuff is fantastic and very hard to compete with. But DuckDuckGo is doing a decent job. I've, I've switched to them completely. I've really? tested them throughout the years, and then I've, ah, this is no good. I, I, I still need the functionality. So I'll just have to keep giving my thoughts to Google until I can find something that, that works as well. And I'll, I'll say DuckDuckGo is 95% of the way there. But it's, wow. it's enough for me where I've, I've switched to it. I don't use right. Google Search anymore. At all? At all. On any device? On any device. I only use and DuckDuckGo. That's... That's interesting. I use I use Firefox and I have it configured to DuckDuckGo by default, right. so that when I type a thing into the address bar and I search for it, it just goes straight to DuckDuckGo. And that's something you can find in your browser if you go to your settings. There's a a, a thing called default search engine, and you can tell it to you know you have Yahoo, Bing, Google, DuckDuckGo. Those are like the four that you'll see. Right. Um, Google's by far the most functional. And then uh, the other two, Yahoo and Bing, uh, they don't do that well functionally. No. And, Duck, and, and they don't respect your privacy either. And so DuckDuckGo is the second most functional in my mind and the only one that cares about privacy. Right. And, and that's back to the broader thing here. I, I, you know, I keep repeating it, but I just think it's worth, it's easy to question, like, why do I care about this stuff? Why should well, I care about this? This is going to be know? my next question after we get through with the. Let's talk about VPN. And then I've got a very okay. important question. So, what is a, a, a virtual private network does what and how? It's a very technical um, uh, networking tool that's basically used to hide your network connection amongst other network connections. And so the easiest analogy or the picture. So everybody's draw, got a, 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 an IP address. Yes. Everybody's email address, everybody's email server assigns an IP address to the user. It comes from your that, internet provider. Right. Comcast or AT&T or Cox or whoever gives you an IP address. Right. Now that's associated with your computer. It's associated right? with your router. So every device in your home or your office right. appears to have, there's a public facing IP address that comes from your internet provider. And there's a bunch of private IP addresses inside your building, your house or your office. Right. And uh, for the most part, your activity online comes from that public facing IP address. And so if you have 10 devices, all 10 will appear outside as coming from the same place but they'll Id identify themselves uniquely based on the metadata that we discussed. Mm -hmm. Now, when you use the internet, it goes from your computer. You, you, you send a, uh, you ask the address book, DNS. What's the IP address for google.com? What happens when you ask that, when your computer does that, is it goes from your computer to the router in your closet, and then it connects into Cox or AT&T or your internet provider, transmits over their wires and through their networking equipment, through a bunch of switches and routers and stuff that is all happening in literally light speed till it eventually gets over to that uh, server that Google owns or to the address book server to give you the IP address back. And it, it receives the request for the IP address and then, and then the, the process reverses and comes all the way back through all that equipment at light speed back into your router, back into your PC. And all of that shit takes less than a tenth of a second. It's all measured in typically two-digit milliseconds. So anywhere from 10 to 20 milliseconds is the amount of time it'll take if you're in the U.S. to go from your device to the server on the other end. And it's back. super fast. Um, and when you, when you do that, when you, that's just using the Internet. That's what happens. You have you yeah. have data that goes from your computer through that whole string of things and then back again. And it's doing that thousands of times uh, in, in, in a given minute. 
you'd be surprised how many thousands of those mm -hmm. those routes take place. Um, and so what happens is you're using let's let's call it Cox. Let's say that's your internet provider. Cox is your transport for all that. They are the bus that you're riding on. Well, they are operating the bus. They can see who else is on the bus, and they can see what else everybody's doing on that bus. They can see if we're you know to further the the picture of the bus ride. Everybody's reading their book or reading their paper. And, and the bus driver can look in the mirror and be like, that guy's got the New York Times, that guy's on Google.com. You know, mm -hmm. What if you don't want the bus driver to see what you're doing or the book you're reading? You can put a cover over it and it's, got, it's called a VPN. And now the bus driver is the VPN provider. So you create what network IT guys like me call a tunnel. But it's a good word for it because you're, you're, you're in this protected tunnel others cannot see into it's encrypted and it's encrypted in a way that's pretty effective yeah and so if you don't want cox to see what you're doing or what you're reading then you might hire a vpn provider to be the bus driver instead now it's a little slower usually because it has to it has to go th that tunnel has to go through cox and out to the vpn provider and then to where it was going to go it inserts a stop so it adds the number of milliseconds and slows stuff down a little bit um, but you can choose to change your bus driver basically mm -hmm. and say, I'd like, you know, I'm, a, I'm at a coffee shop today and while I'm sitting here in the coffee shop on their public Wi-Fi that's free, if, if there's a hacker in the room or a network engineer, they can see what everybody else is doing. I can open up my laptop right. and watch the network traffic of the right. whole coffee shop right. and see what everybody's doing. But there might be one guy where his activity is totally scrambled and it just looks like junk. He's using a VPN. Right. Because he might not want the other people in the coffee shop or on the airplane or in the airport to see what he's doing. And I suppose that would be because if he decides to buy something from Amazon in the coffee shop, he doesn't want to transmit his uh, credit card information to any to a hacker yeah. know, sitting two tables away from him watching all the activity in the, in, in the, in I the think Starbucks, right? It's, it's a good way to describe it. It, it's just for the purposes of clarification. It's not technically accurate because the credit card data is actually heavily encrypted already. Right. In fact, most websites are encrypted to the point where that guy in the coffee shop, he can see what website you're going to, but he can't see what you're doing on it. Right. He can see that you've requested Google.com, but he cannot see the contents of your Gmail. Right. Or your, uh, if you're on Amazon even searching for what to buy, he can't even see your search on Amazon. He can just see that you're on Amazon. Well, then... What are we afraid of him for? Because if you're on a website that is not encrypted, he can see that. Mm -hmm. So many are, most are. Google has actually done a good job at encouraging website owners to encrypt their stuff. If your site is encrypted, you get ranked higher in the Google search results. So Google has oh, really? incentivized security. That's interesting. Which that is, is amazing. Good. That's done a lot for the internet and for the privacy of all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's a wonderful thing they've done. But there are sites that are unencrypted. There are sites that don't use proper encryption. There are sites that there, there's, there's a lot of technical stuff that can happen to where somebody can try to pry open the tunnel and peek inside. Right. And if you just want to make that harder, then you can use a VPN. It makes it a lot harder. Now you then you have to trust, you're just switching your trust. You were trusting Starbucks's Wi-Fi. You were trusting Cox's internet and AT&T's internet. Now you're trusting express Now your you're VPN. trusting ExpressVPN mm -hmm. or Tunnel Bear is a popular one. All these guys that are, you know, every time Joe Rogan calls you, you know, his phone calls are funded by his ads for these VPN Look. providers. Missed call. Two of the damn things. <laughs> God That's, almighty, I can't. <laughs> so... Uh, a VPN is, uh, it seems, I've just started hearing these things advertised over the past couple of years. Yeah. Are we just getting rolling with that? And how prominent are they? How prominent will they become? Should we use one? I would say that generally you don't need to use one. As, as, as odd as that might sound to some, and, and I'll tell you, if you listen to their ads, they say the exact opposite. They promise total security. Yeah. If you use their product, which is bullshit. Yeah. It's not possible. They they're they're masking the fact that they are helping alter who you trust with your traffic 
but they're not making it any more secure or private. And some of them actually violate those promises directly. They're actually harvesting. The, yeah. Right. There's some that don't, and there's some that do. And it's not easy to tell the difference. It's a very unethical landscape that's out there, right. t- especially the ones that are the big advertisers. Right. Um, should you use one? Probably not, unless you use a lot of public Wi-Fi um, and, you're, and you're concerned about being extra careful. But it's a little bit more of a pain. It's an extra step you have to do. You have to remember to turn it on. And then you got to remember to turn it off. And that's not something most people are going to do. Well, and, you know, not everybody goes to Starbucks and gets on with their laptop and gets on Starbucks' Wi-Fi. Uh, or goes to the airport and gets on the airport Wi-Fi, or goes on the airplane and gets on the airplane Wi-Fi. Yeah. But many do. Uh, lots and lots of people yeah. do. Yeah, I understand that. I don't. Ever Probably do most that. don't. I guess. I I don't ever do that. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons I don't is because of, of these concerns. I, you know, if you're on somebody else's Wi-Fi, you know, now when we go to a gym for the weekend to do a seminar, I might. Or I might not. Usually, I don't hook up to their Wi-Fi on the phone. Yeah. Usually, I just get it off the air, and it works just fine. Unless we're in some weird ass location that doesn't have good access, but I, I yeah. just get it off the regular yeah. telephone data. Yeah, and, and that's, that's fine. That's fine, isn't it? You're in that case. You're trusting your your cellular provider. Yes. They are the bus driver. Right. And so it's just shifting the trust. Right. Now, now, granted, it's not that... So if, you're, if your cellular provider is Verizon it or is. T-Mobile, okay, so it's Verizon. So you go to somebody's gym and you hook up to their Wi-Fi and they're hooked up through AT&T, mm-hmm. let's say. Um, then now you're just using AT&T. You know? right. Now, the, the, the gym Wi-Fi itself is probably fine. It's just a matter of shifting the trust to AT&T. Mm-hmm. They're, they're all the same in that regard. All the internet providers are the same. They play dirty games. They all just got busted for selling your real-time location to private parties for money. Wow. It's like a $400 million. No, it might be more. It might be in the billions. I can't remember. Big lawsuit. They got busted once. And and this they, is all of them, right? Yeah. AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. They Sprint, all claim not all, to. And right. I, I think they all just got busted, if not with the exception of one or two. Right. But this happened before. And they said, like, oh, uh, it was a rogue part of the company. Our bad. We won't do it anymore. Uh, rogue. We won't rogue do it anymore. part of the company. They didn't stop doing Somebody it. Somebody that we were paying that we didn't have any control over. <laughs> right. Oh, well, that's. Whoops. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, and so they kept it, doing it. Yeah. And then they just got busted again. Too lucrative because there, there was some good. It's just uh, too damn lucrative. There was some really good investigative reporting that was done where some guys went out. I think it was some guys from Vice, maybe. Uh, we'll have to double check that, but they went out and hired a private investigator to get their location data, and they did <laughs> real time locate. That is a privacy nightmare. Where am I sitting right now? What yes. stoplight am I am I yeah. sitting in front of right now? approximated right. GPS coordinates. Yeah, that's... Cell phone provide... What cell phone towers do is they triangulate your location mm-hmm. for the purposes of, of allowing the network to function properly so they right. know where your cell phone's moving and they can bounce your, your call from tower to tower. Right. You can That data is also gathered for other purposes and then sold to private parties. So, now again, that's one of those things that like, there's if you use a cell phone... Just, just look at this. <laughs> and here we are hauling this goddamn thing around. Yeah. The... There's mine right over there. Yeah. And but it does so many cool things. It, it does. It so does. So many cool things. Get, get, you know, it would be impossible for me to explain to my mother who died in 97. It would be impossible to explain this to her. Completely yeah. impossible to yeah. explain it. Yeah. Uh, of of all of the changes that have happened in the past 30 years. This is, this is, hey, you know what? This is what we, all we don't have a flying car, right. but we got this we got goddamn. Better. We sure do. This is what we always wanted. We wanted a TV in our hands. We wanted to be able right. to, to video call each other. Right. Dick Tracy, but, but all that shit. Thought, like, Dick Tracy, it's on my wrist, yeah, man. We never thought it's about right there, right now. That's amazing. We never thought about who would be providing it. 
and what they're going to do with the information right. that we're giving them, right? Yeah. Like, we just have right. a fantasy that it would just exist and it'd be awesome. But yeah. there's, you know, there's incentives behind having all this information. <laughs> right. It will be done right. with the best of intentions. <laughs> of there are incentives to providing this to us. There certainly are. So, this has, by the way, my my Dick Tracy watch has a SIM card in it. This has the location for my freaking wrist. Right there. Is being recorded right now. And if now. you move your wrist over here on this side of the microphone and then move it back over there. Yeah. That's somebody knows data. that. They, they're going to know that we're better friends than people than we let on. If I, because it would be sitting in your lap. Right. <laughs> and we don't want Especially them to. Especially if your man. wrist starts doing that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so, so the, the, look, so, these are like, these are terrible negative things that I'm trying not to, you know, it's, it's worth talking about and putting it out there because people should be aware from a constructive element. It's, so, it's nothing you can so do. So, here's you know. this I have an important question. What if I decide to not worry about this shit? What if I decide to not encrypt anything, to not install Next DNS on the on the phone, on my laptop, on my on my desktop? What if I decide to let Google know my location? What if I decide to pay absolutely no attention to privacy and security online? What happens? That's a really wonderful question. Um, I'm known for that. You, it's good. <laughs> so, you are trusting the storage and analysis of your mind to third parties. Essentially, your mind. It's the yeah. Best way I could think of. Did yeah. No, that's that's a that's a fair. That's a fair assessment. And that sounds over, like I'm overdoing it. But It sounds it, hyperbolic. It, it, but really, honestly, it's not, is it? No, because it, it's a psychology game. This is what I'm doing here. Yeah. Right? You're staring. You're, I, I, you're, you're, I am yeah. thinking into this device. And it's thinking back and to you. And it's thinking back, and it's helping me think. Yeah. God knows in what ways. Yeah. You know? But I'm, we're thinking just like that, back and forth. We're thinking. Yep. Now, there's not a hell of a lot that goes on that's more personal than that, is it? No. I mean, look at what happened with Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge Analytica was a company that bought individualized private information from Facebook so that they could generate ads to manipulate the decisions that people make. In 2016. In the election. Yeah. Yes. That is what happens when you trust these third parties with your mind. Yes. And that's what, because. And, you know, and we've just scratched the surface of that. Oh, I mean. We have just scratched the surface. This, the, the level of interactivity between us and our computers in 1996 when I first got one. And now. Oh, it's just, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's grown it, quite it's, a bit. <laughs> it's, it's, well, the word exponential is overused. Yeah. But I, in this case, it, it really, I'd say it's true. That's, here. that's actually yeah. probably true, isn't it? Yeah. We went from having computers that weren't connected at all. Right. To exponential and, and literally are, are overused. Right. They are. We really mean really, really. This is literally this is exponential. Literally exponential this is literally <laughs> the end of the world no <laughs> no, not quite. no no really it's not but in this particular case uh an exponential uh increase in interactivity which goes by definition both ways yeah has occurred and with this thing in your pocket yeah by your bed oh yeah when you go to sleep with and when you, you wake up. With you everywhere, in the yeah. hospital, yeah. everywhere you go, this portal into your brain. The hospital's a great one. Is, is with you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize that it's two-way. I think a lot of people might realize the, the right. one-way, which is the input. Right. They think, I'm using this phone. 
Well, the phone's also using you. It sure is. The phone is using you. And you guys had better think about that real hard. Uh, and like I said, we just scratched the surface. Ten years from now, I, I cannot imagine what this thing here will have evolved into. Oh, man. And I mean, what it will be able to do yeah. to you. Yeah. That's going to be a whole different landscape that, that will be hard to fathom. It really will be. I mean, right now, this deal right here has got a lot of capability, uh, a, a lot of physical interactive capability because of the GPS function that it, that it has. Yep. This thing may be reading your blood pressure, your body temperature. Oh, in the future, you mean? In 10 years from yeah, now, oh, yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah. any idea what this goddamn thing will be able yeah. to do. Well, that's likely going to be the case. It, I mean, It's you know, probably yeah. available now. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean all the apps that have been developed on this damn thing that are just well, just astonishing. Look at this. Look at the sensors at on the, the back of the sensors on the back of this. That's what they do. You know, that's that's if if this becomes that with the much larger computing package that this can hold over that. Now the reason I, by the way that I'm wearing this, I'm sitting here telling you about this right as I have one on my wrist. Mhm. Mm is because to date, Apple's done a pretty good job at not being an advertising company. Yeah. They're a computer company. And they have done a better than average job in uh, in terms of telling the government no. They, they have. They, yes. they really they have done have. an admirable job of this. Yeah. Is, you know, they get a subpoena for data. Their default reaction is no. That's exactly it. And, that's, and, and, and they'll that's fight them. I like that. I do, too. You know, Any sane person does. Because if, cause if that's you the is about me. Did you see the news story a day or two ago about the guy that was riding his bicycle by a place where a crime happened? And the, the police requested location data from everybody that was near there from Google. And they knew he was near there. And they knew that he was near there. And he became a suspect because he rode his bike by there. Oh God! If you use an Android just, device, it is always recording your location. Any Android phone is recording your location. Generally, yes. That's why they're cheaper. It kind of it kind of is. That's why they're cheaper. There's two reasons why they're cheaper. They've they've done they've done the ecosystems thing, so they allow other players to uh, you know to make android phones whereas apple doesn't do that right that makes them cheaper but the other thing that makes them cheaper is their business model they're an advertising company right. google is an advertising company google is not a search company right google is not a software company google is not a harvard google is an advertising company and that google phone is an advertising device yes that's all it is through and through and if you turn off their advertising functions many of the, the functions of your device get limited to the point where you become so annoyed that you'll turn them back on. Right. I, I, I was a staunch, yeah, Nick and I both have made the change. I was a staunch Android user because for techies like me, I could do some stuff on Android that I can't do on iPhone. And I, I do a bunch of weird stuff, right? That like I'm, I'm always running special little tools and stuff just for fun right. or for, for work or whatever. I tried to turn some of that stuff off and my phone basically became useless. Not totally useless, but the functions that I used you every day. You could probably day, dial 911. Yeah, my the phone still functioned. I could still run a lot of the apps I wanted to run, but many of the functions that I used frequently throughout the day became inoperable. I said, if you want that function back, you got to turn this, those things back on. Right. And so instead, I sold it and bought an iPhone because iPhone doesn't do that. Right. And I'm, I'm very disappointed in the decision process that happened at Google to allow that to become the case because I know for a fact that the, re the permissions that they're requesting for me to share my location all the time are not required for some of the functionality that they in turn limited me from using, even though it said they were. You know, so that's, it's, there's a, there's a huge, you, you don't mean thing. they lied, do you? That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Uh, 
And, so, and, you know, Ben, tell us what we need to do. What do, what do we? What should now, we do? Now that we're okay. Now, now that, that we know that scared the daylight out of everybody. Doing things has a has a has a consequence. And granted, some of this shit is esoteric. Some of this shit is yes. looking down the road. But as a general rule, I don't think you want everybody in the world inside your brain. And this is what is going on here. All these people are getting in your brain. They have access to your brain. Like it's never in the history of the human race has there been such access inside the head of another human being. From afar, no less. From from Seattle. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or, or, or wherever. Or, I mean, Antarctica. Yes. You 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 have got a, a situation here where we are paying very dearly for the for access to this technology, and ideally, you would like to structure the relationship so that it leans in your direction, not theirs. So, how do we do that? That's exactly it. I think it first requires acknowledging the risk and being aware of it, which I'm trying to help with today. Right. It then requires the willingness to make a trade-off. In this case, the trade-off seems small, but I know from experience being a computer guy for 25 years trying to help people use their computers properly, there's a the path of least resistance is real. And if you got to yes. push a button to make a thing work, that button's probably not going to get pushed. So if pushing the button means turning on next DNS or going through the initial setup process, it's a, it's a five minute um, task that m some people, if you're not fully bought into why privacy is important, you should be like, why am I doing this? And then it, it gets turned off one day and you just forget about it forever and you go on with your life. It requires the trade off of identifying the fact that is privacy important to me or not? And Am I willing to send a signal back to the marketplace so that those ad companies have one less view, one less click, one less network packet from me as a drop in the bucket? Right. Let's add more drops to the bucket to send a signal back that privacy matters to us as individuals. Well, but but let me let me restate my previous question. Okay. What bad thing happens to me this afternoon? If I don't use Brave, if I don't install a VPN, if I don't go to nextdns.com, .io, I'm sorry. Yeah. What, what bad things occur? I'd say nothing today, right, right now. It's you, you, might view, you might end up going to lunch at a restaurant based on an ad that you didn't even know you saw that influenced your decision. Right. That's not... A bad thing. That's not malignant. You got a sandwich really? instead of a taco. Right. You didn't have to give the taco guy your social security number. Right. Right. <laughs> um, that's not a bad thing on its face. I don't like it. You know, I'd like for my my I, my decisions to be influenced by my friends or by well, myself. You, you'd or, you like know, to like, think they are anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'd like to be. Uh, you know, I'd like to think that. Um, your your decisions might get manipulated. Is that bad? That's up to you. Right. I think it's bad. I don't like it. I don't prefer it. I'd prefer that my decisions were not manipulated by people by I don't know. By somebody trying to sell me something. Yeah. By people I don't know, I haven't established trust with. Or, you know, right now we're talking about people trying to sell you stuff. Yeah. Ten years from now, during the second Bernie Sanders administration. Right. We might be talking about a completely different thing, you know. Yeah, and and that, uh, that government side of it is is a is, a, is a thing, and and it, but it, it's crazy because there's nothing really nothing you can do about it. it. There's nothing most people can do about it. The the lengths you have to go. Well, what you could do, not worst case scenario, what you could do is take a hammer and yeah. beat this into little tiny pieces. Then go over to your laptop and beat it into little tiny pieces and take your desktop and beat it into little tiny pieces and, and, cut, up and cut up all your credit cards and pay gas 
for your cash and your food and just withdraw. Now, you could do that. That would be the, the, the solution. You, you, that is the only solution. Yes. And anything <laughs> less than that, you're still participating. Yeah. So. That's right. There's a decision tree here. There absolutely is. There, there's only, you, know, you can never, you can never become secure. Remember that acronym CIA, the C being confidential. You can right. never have security. You can never have confidentiality truly in the long term if you participate in, in credit modern society or basically. modern yes i mean because because you, your credit card transactions right. are tied back to every credit card tra- I, we used to get people all the time wanting to call in an order with a credit card they want to call me at the office and will give me my cre- their credit card number over the phone with absolutely no awareness of of what they're what they're doing yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, older people just don't understand. Every credit card transaction is already on the Internet. That's where if you call the office and read me your credit card number over the phone. Now, I got it on a piece of paper. Right. That I might forget to throw away. Right. But what am I going to do with that credit card number? Go buy some I'm cool going to put it on the internet. <laughs> so. I'm going to put it on the internet because that's how all credit card transactions are conducted is on the internet, whether you want it to be or not. That's So using a credit card puts you on the internet. And using your telephone, using your laptop, using your desktop, you're participating in this information exchange. You're getting information. They're getting information. In, out. Just like the way your heart beats, you are engaging in a transaction. And what we're trying to do today is to, is to make you more aware of the scope of that transaction. It is, it's a lot more significant than you probably think. Okay. And, and God, I don't know what this is going to look. The real question is not what's going on now. The real question is, is how is this goddamn thing going to evolve? Absolutely. And I, I don't know. That's why you got to add your drop to the bucket. You got to be that drop in the bucket that makes the slight trade off of making sure to set up and configure next DNS and making sure to use Firefox and making sure to just be aware of the fact that when you use the internet, when you use your phone, there's a lot of stuff happening that you can't control. But if you can, if you can mess with it a little bit, right, you know, that's a good signal to send. So that as if those signals can grow so that in 10 years time, there's decisions being made by large corporations and government entities around right. how to uh, let right. artificial intelligence if, control if 10 things, years from you know, now, this thing comes with D with a, with a VPN installed as the default mechanism. That'll be because you and I decided to voluntarily install it now. Yeah, or or decided yeah. like when I bought an iPhone, I sent a signal to Apple that in some part said your marketing around privacy and your engineering around is privacy working. is what I'm willing to spend my money on. Yes. And that Absolutely. signal is important. You know, there's there's decisions I make in other parts of my life where I try to send signals to the marketplace. I'm sending a small signal as an individual, but that's what I'm doing because right. it's important to me. Right. And privacy is one of those things. Because I want to be able to know that I can sit in a room and have a conversation, the the, the digital room, and 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 know if somebody's listening or not. Right. And 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 if they are listening, I'd like to have invited them. Right. You know. Well, you know, people pay attention to this. Ben hasn't told you everything that he's done for work. That's true. And and Ben knows how things can be misused. So when he tells you these things, pay attention to him. There's one more thing I want to mention just in, in a, right. a final thing here. As part of this idea, some, some friends brought this whole idea up that I should come and talk to you about this. Right. And, and, and part of that idea was that I should do this more broadly on other topics too. And so I launched a website called BenjiExplains.com. My friends call me Benji. I go by Ben, but you know, B-E-N-J-I explains.com. I just remember that fuzzy little dog. Benji? <laughs> 
That was my yeah. mom's dog. It was called Benji, too. Yeah. <laughs> Just hair, terrible. You know, what a great little dog that was. <laughs> but I, I so. wanted to throw that out there. If, if I think if people are interested in... I, I try my best to have a balanced conversation and to help make things constructive. So if there is anything to be done, that can be done. And I've got a bunch of ideas on other topics uh, to talk right. about this. And so if you're interested, check out BenjiExplains.com. BenjiExplains.com. Uh, I think it's important to... to, to let you guys know that Benji has not explained everything that he's done for work in the past. So when Benji tells you that bad things can be done with information, you need to pay attention to it. Okay. Thanks for coming. Appreciate Thank you, the information today. Yeah, ben. Appreciate it, man. Ben Gillen Waters been here with us on starting strength radio, and we will see you again next Friday. <laughs>